All right, we're recording. All right, well, hey, uh, thanks everybody for coming to uh, April. This is April already, uh, office hours. Um, today's topic is, um, in theory, uh, going to be about uh, the key storage and secret storage uh, and password storage uh, facility inside Rundeck. Um, we've also got some new HashiCorp Vault integration. So, so it's a plug in point. You can uh, use HashiCorp Vault to uh, store those secrets and ac ac access them in, uh, in Rundeck. Um, also, but this is interactive sessions. If you've got any questions along the way, uh, you know, on top or even off topic, as long as it's about Rundeck, uh, feel free to, uh, to jump in and, uh, and ask it. Uh, we've got the full hour to, uh, to use. Uh, the two folks are going to do most of the uh, talking today is um, our CTO, Alex Honor, um, whose webcam is still broken, uh, but he'll be doing the demo and kind of talking about the integration. Uh, Luis T Toledo, whose webcam is working. Hi, Luis. Um, he is uh, our lead integration engineer, um, did a lot of the work on the, the vault. Um, Integration. Um, you remember him from last month, the Kubernetes integration. He did a lot of that, uh, that as well. And then uh, Paul Lambert, uh, solutions architect. Uh, he's here as, uh, as well. Um, plus other folks from the Rundeck team. So feel free to ask your questions at any time. Um, and uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, to Alex. All right. Thanks, Damon. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. So let me know if you can see it. should see my uh, Rundeck page with the Vault demo project open. Looks yes. good. All right, cool. Yeah, well, as Damon said, today's office hours is a little bit about um, something you may know about the key store. I'll introduce it in case you haven't. And then talk about this new integration we have with HashiCorp Vault. HashiCorp Vault is a pretty popular secret store. Um, there's a lot of tools that integrate to, to this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. All right, so first let me um, just introduce the idea of the key store for those that may not be aware of it. The key store builds on our storage facility, and you can see here I've just uh, changed my page to the key storage UI, and in here you can see you can add or upload a key, um, different kinds of keys or, or data types basically, private key, public key, or password. So, you know, people use the key store for, um, let's say, putting their SSH keys when you need to um, talk to a remote node via SSH. Uh, you, you might need the private key for that. Um, other tools need a key, uh, not just SSH, so you can use this for other things. And then as you notice, password, <clears throat> password can be really for any kind of purpose. Um, could be a password or a passphrase in SSH, if we're talking about that, maybe a password to WinRM connection. But uh, you may uh, need a password for your jobs. Maybe you have a job that connects to a, an API that needs an API token, some kind of secret. Or maybe you want to connect to something like a database or a network device, and to connect to that, you'll need a password. So those are just some ideas for how um, passwords and keys might come into play when you're, you're executing your automated job. And of course, uh, this UI indicates that uh, you, know, you can upload a file and type this in through the GUI, um, but there is a command line uh, called RD, which provides um, a, a way you can script populating and maintaining the data in the key store and the RD command line really is just a wrapper around the Rundeck API, so you could also just use our, our web API to manage the same data. So that's just a quick introduction to what the key store is and some ideas about uh, where you want to maybe think about using it. Let's come back over here to our, our little vault demo. And um, really what, what I'm gonna do is just walk you through a few job examples that show you using the key um, in various contexts. But in each case, um, we'll be actually getting the key data from Vault. And uh, so one thing just to, um, 
make you aware about is the key store in Rundeck is actually a plugin point. And for those that have um, used the key store, especially the open source uh, Rundeck, you may have found where on the file system uh, key data is maintained. And really what you're seeing there is the uh, default um, plugin for the key store uh, uses the files. And, um, and so um, it's really just kind of a simple, easy to get started uh, implementation. Um, but you could also use a database um, as the back end to your key store. And if you're uh, managing more than one run deck and you want to have um, you know, a common uh, repository, um, it's important to know that that plugin point lets you share a back end. And that's really where this Vault plugin is coming into play. Um, we are hooking in Vault as the plugin um, to talk to a Vault uh, storage back end. So, you know, Vault, of course, has its own options for what backends you can use uh, for it to store data. And uh, in our case, we've decided to use Amazon's S3 as the backing store to Vault. And uh, that's just uh, really because we're hosting this, this example in Amazon. Uh, what you're seeing here, if you notice my location bar, it says AWS One Deck. We have this run deck installed in an AWS instance and uh, just taking advantage of S3 being there um, for our vault to use as well. So um, we'll walk through that a little bit in one of the jobs. Um, there's one other uh, plugin just worth mentioning, which is called a storage converter. Uh, run deck has a, a place that you can. Um, manage how the, the data is encoded or encrypted even um, in, the, in the storage back end. So um, that's especially important, let's say, if you're using a database um, or the files, if uh, um, you're just kind of setting up your run deck, uh, somebody could look at your, your file system or log into your database and see the, the data in clear text. So if you're worried about that, um, take a look at the storage converter plugin um, that will encrypt it in the backing store. So if somebody breaks in to the file system or the database, they'll just see a bunch of encrypted data instead of the plain text. So um, that's really just kind of the last thing to say about how all the storage facility pieces work together to give you the key store and manage things in a secure way. Maybe just stop there for a second in case anybody was Curious to ask more about maybe kind of the architecture of the key store before we move on to some of these examples. Plus, also, it'd be great to hear if anybody's used the key storage <laughs> and what you're, uh, what you're using it for. Um, that would be great. Hey guys, this is Joel Armani. Um, we're actually using the key store in one of our deployments. Um, we're storing a service account password and then passing it off to scripts. One of the questions I had was um, in the jobs you can define uh, secure or encrypted. Um, and in order to use it as a passable parameter, um, you actually have to expose the password in the logging. I was wondering if there was any work being done to be able to hide that password. Hey, Joel. Uh, good to hear you. Um, actually, I do have one example I can show you straight away that uh, gives you some ability to mask that. Great. Now that'd be great. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll just go straight to there. Um, I'm just going to show you the jobs I have in here. So these are the jobs that will take us through the various ways of interacting with the key store all the time, um, data coming from Vault itself. Uh, here in my, my terminal window, I've, uh, I've logged into the Run Deck server itself. That's what this uh, AWS instance, um, I've got my browser. This is the corresponding terminal to it. 
And just wanted to show you, we've got Vault installed here. Anybody who's used Vault is used to seeing this usage. And I just thought I'd kind of um, show you what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. If I do a Vault list uh, secret, um, we can see we've got uh, some keys in here. This is not Rundeck specific. This is just me using Vault and looking in, in secret. Um, but you see there's a, a uh, little folder here for Rundeck. So let's just go and look in there. And basically what we're showing is we've just set up Vault here to put all the Rundeck stuff under the Rundeck uh, folder here. And then there's keys. So this is, this is really the, uh, the entry point into um, all of the data that Rundeck key store is actually going to use. So the, the key store, or sorry, the, uh, the Vault plugin really is a, a Vault client. And um, it's using the Vault API to get at what you're seeing here from the Vault command line. And so when somebody goes to the, um, to the Rundeck key store UI or anytime you're accessing uh, keys in the key store, Really what's happening is Rundeck is asking the key store plugin, in this case Vault, to either list or read something from Vault. So let's just do that. Um, we'll read the key slash test stop password. And um, this is all the metadata Vault gives us when we're looking at um, an object in the, in the key store. Um, and this metadata here is also it, um, driven by the Rundeck um, key creation process. So um, Vault is kind of like a key value store. You can set these kind of keys and put whatever you want in here. Um, one thing Vault does that we don't do is actually show you the data in the key store. So um, that could be nice if you're debugging, but in the Rundeck API, if it's if it's considered uh, secure, we don't even show you this like that. Plugins can get it. Um, there, uh, a secure option, as Joel asked about, can get it. But uh, other than that, it's not meant to be to seen like be seen like that. Um, before I actually run some jobs, I, I thought I would uh, just say, you know, we've got some nodes in in our project. These are other. These just happen to be other Rundeck instances in, in AWS. Nothing really that special about these nodes. They're just nodes that we can send commands to and, and have jobs that do remote dispatching. Um, but uh, each of these nodes, let's just edit the configuration here, uh, is uh, reached through um, SSH. And we have a default key to use to connect to them. So when we're SSHing, unless we said otherwise, uh, each node will just default to using this uh, private key. And you can see it's a path into the key store. And this little selector here basically shows us where it is in the key store. But basically what happens is when we need to make a remote uh, connection, and this is an SSH, this plugin will know how to get that data out of the key store and then pass it on to the underlying SSH plugin to connect to the node and, and do whatever it needs to do. So um, that's, uh, that's important to say. All right, so let's go back here to our first job. So that first job I think was, was a good question. Let's say we have a job that needs to um, do something with the password. So, you know, of course this looks pretty, pretty bad practice, right? You would never want to do that. Um, there could be cases where somebody wrote an inline script and inadvertently did something like this. Um, so let's just edit this job. And, uh, and I wanted to show you that I used a, a fairly new feature called a log filter to mask passwords. So I'll just click on that. And what this does is uh, the log filter is a, is a kind of plugin that can read the, the output of a step or all of the steps. In this case, I've got a step level log filter, but I could have a global log filter. And it just knows 
the syntax of um, things like dollar option dot, and it can look up, in this case, is there an option named password, and then what kind of option type is it? If it's secure, it knows it's a, um, you know, some kind of secret. So the mass passwords basically knows how to do that kind of lookup, and uh, it replaces what you would have printed out to be the password with whatever type here. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna color it. So um, the rest of the steps aren't important here. They're just showing I can, from run deck, use these vault command line tools. So um, I'm just gonna run that and see what it looks like. So, you know, this example could have been, I needed to read the password to uh, connect to a database, or maybe it was an API token need to connect to some, um, some remote service. And you can see here, it, it did figure out that I was trying to print out a password, and it replaced any occurrence of that with this, this replacement string. Um, so this is, uh, this is in the pro team, or Rundeck Pro 236, is that correct? It is in there, yes. Is it in any earlier versions? I think we're still on 138, and bringing new software into the environment I'm in is not, it's not an easy process, let's say. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this plugin, I think, builds on 2.10.0. If Greg's on the line, I don't know if he can remember or not, but it's, I want to say it's within the last six months. Okay. Is that something you guys could definitively get back to me on? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm All right. Thomas here. Ben Thomas here. Um, hey, ben. Just a quick one on that. Um, if you did the inline bash script option, can you also use that mask passwords to do the same thing? Or is that only when you're calling the bash script directly? Um, if you're using the the um, context variable syntax. So if you're using, you know, at sign option dot password or dollar curly option dot password, um, then it will work. Awesome, nice. Um, and uh, one, one thing just to add, um, I don't know whether this is helpful, Joel, but uh, we're doing a similar thing to you where we're passing in passwords that connect to multiple systems and we run them on a, on a separate execution host that actually goes off, runs the Python scripts and passes in all the optional passwords to it. Um, and what we've done is, is rather than specify them on the command line, we actually export them. So before we do a bash inline script when it's running a Python script and we go export, um, you know, like a secure password equals blah, which is your at option dot so-and-so. So we export them all first and then the Python script will just do an OS dot environment call to pull in them passwords and then utilize them. And we found that was quite effective. So then at the end of the script, alerts. do you guys wipe those from the uh, environment? Uh, yes, uh, because um, basically the way we use it is um, it logs in as a Rundex service account on our execution host, does that job, and then when it logs out, the history's gone. Okay. Because we're, uh, we're passing it in to do uh, like chef bootstrapping of remote nodes locally on the on the actual Rundeck server. So um, we'd like to be able to mask that. Uh, we have different operators that go out and execute the jobs in different uh, lab environments. So it'd be nice for them not to be able to see the, the password. Uh, we actually load it from uh, Chef Databags when we install Rundeck. So the, we're using the password storage in that capacity, but it does get exposed in the, in the logs. So it'd be really nice to be able to filter that out. Yeah, let me, Joel, let me just uh, give you another strategy for this problem that you're talking about. This example here uses, a, this is a case where it needs to get the AWS um, secret access key. And um, of course, that's just basically like a password. You don't want to give that out to anybody. Um, now, the reason I'm bringing this up is we have a case here for a step plugin. And um, this step plugin is really a, a Python wrapper around the AWS command line. That's not the important part. The important part is a step plugin 
can declare one of its input properties to be a, a uh, object type that is read from the key store automatically. And when you set the property to be that way, you automatically get the selector like we looked at before in the, um, the first job where it was a, an option type. Um, so this might be another strategy to think about because um, the plugin will get the, the, the secret data, but you don't need to expose it even as an option or um, you know, maybe this is like a more encapsulated way to, to manage it. And I don't know if you've created a step plugin before, but um, for those who haven't, really it's just take a script that you already have working, uh, put it in a simple directory structure, create a YAML file that, YAML file that tells Rundeck what arguments to pass to it. And that's basically it. You zip it up and you put it in the plugins directory. So it's not a big development effort. It's more of a packaging thing. Um, but this is, a, I, I find, a real clean way to uh, integrate with the key store without kind of exposing it so much to the, to the end user. Hey, Alex? Yeah, that sounds good. I'll have to look into that. Yes. Alex, we had a question in chat. Um, is this functionality available in open source? They are on Rundeck 2.10.6-1. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let me just run this job then. Um, the job itself is, is actually kind of funny because I think it's kind of funny because uh, the, the vault key store, as I said earlier, is storing its data in S3. And we're just going to use this AWS S3 LS step to read that same data. So it's kind of looking at the data from from a different direction now. So we'll run the job and um, uses the S3LS command basically to list out all the stuff that Vault is doing inside the S3 bucket. So some of this stuff is just kind of alien to me, a bunch of UUIDs and probably private data that Vault knows how to deal with. But, um, but here you can recognize that Here's that data that we looked at when I was running the Vault CLI. So all this other stuff is important to Vault, but kind of just under the covers for me. Again, um, as I was making that point earlier, by using a step plugin, there is no option required uh, from an end user standpoint. So just to kind of remind ourselves, uh, what I mean here is that uh, in this case, I'm exposing the fact that I'm getting some secret to the user and you know, having to worry about this kind of thing. Um, the strategy that we're talking about here is, well, let's just take that, that script and repackage it in a plugin. Now I don't, now I'll, as part of the inputs to the plugin, I need to give it a path to where the secret is, but now this is kind of just a lower level detail to the job runner and the plugin kind of magical behavior of knowing how to automatically read and decode that data and then set it as a variable inside my script takes care of a lot of that concern of how am I going to pass this around and you know is it on a remote node and is it an environment variable or is it a command line flag or all those kinds of things you can decide differently once you think about packaging it up as a as a web step plugin. So that's kind of a little uh, tip um, for everybody in case they haven't really dug into plugins yet. All right, <clears throat> so we've used a a key in the key store to pass in an, a, an API token basically for this example and we've um, set a secure option type to automatically read a password and try to print it out but we filtered out the actual value in this example. Let's pick one last example here. And this is a, kind of a, a hypothetical health check. Uh, we've got a job here called check run deck status, you know, because we've got various uh, run decks here out in the world and 
we want to make sure that uh, I don't know they, they're printing out the right uh, you know, kernel and operating system. We want to know what that is, and then we want to make sure that they're they're listening on four four three. So that's just sort of a simplistic health check idea there, um, and it's going to run on these nodes. And I mentioned earlier that probably one of the first use cases for the key store is I need to connect to nodes with an SSH private key. How do I get the private key? And um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a default private key in the key store stored in vault. And when we connect to these three nodes, we're gonna need that key. So this is a very simple case. Anybody who's used Rundeck basically at all uh, knows this, this will be pretty, pretty much out of the box functionality practically. And you can see here, we've reached all our nodes and each node returned its U name. And uh, we did that little net stat looking for 443. It's everybody's listening. Everything's looking good. Our health check succeeded. Um, and of course, we didn't have to worry about where the SSH key came from and all that stuff. So that's just kind of a standard uh, run deck configuration. The only difference is that instead of the keys being stored in the file system or database like you might have in the past, we're using Vault as our backend to get all that stuff. Any questions about this? Okay. Well, um, that's really kind of the, the gist of the demo and giving you the overview and, and um, really how these things fit together. I wanted to bring us back to the readme here um, and just make you aware of this is the home page for the plugin. Uh, the plugin works, of course, you can see it's been working there. Um, but it's a fairly new project and we are very eager to hear people's experience with it and if there's anything else it needs. Um, really just needs to fulfill the, the requirements of a Rundex storage plugin, so in that sense it's done. But maybe there's some other um, use cases that we haven't thought about. And um, anyway, just come give it a try here. If you have any issues, you can file an issue on this project. This plugin is part of the Rundex plugin, so you can see here um, it lives in that organization. If you're a pro subscriber, you get this fully supported. Um, it is out here as a, a community plugin, though, so you can give it a shot on your own. And um, I want to give a, a big thank you to Val Fadiv. He originated this plugin, um, kind of got the bones of it in place, and then uh, Luis took it from there and, and made it production code quality, and, and uh, that's what you've been seeing in action during this. There is a, a Docker configuration in here. We're kind of just finishing up um, getting that nice and clean and easy to use. But uh, the idea here is that, first of all, you can just run uh, all of our basic tests against it. But uh, if I dig in here, you'll see there's a Docker Compose and uh, sets up a couple of nodes that uh, brings up your vault and brings up a run deck and knows how to configure the vault plugin. As you can see, you've got a test script to do that for you. And this will give you a little sandbox to play around with. So um, you, know, you don't have to actually update your own production run deck per se. You can uh, just give this a shot and play around and see how the, the two work together. Um, of course, if you have questions about vault itself, go over there to the vault homepage. There's all there's a whole world in itself about um, ways people configure Vault. Um, but as far as Rendek goes, it's really just that plugin and a, and a working Vault API someplace. Okay, anything else um, before we kind of wind things up? Yeah. Um, hey, this is Damon again. I, you know, I'd, I'd love just to ask sort of the, the people that have joined, um, you know, to just meet your expectations? Is it something that you find useful? Is there something else that you want that you were expecting or you want 
um, you know, just kind of curious how people manage, um, you know, secrets and passwords and keys today and, you know, what they'd want out of Rundeck in the future. Hey, Damon, it's Joel again. Um, yeah, I think it's really helpful. Um, in the capacity that we're able to use Rundeck, uh, we're not allowed to use SSH, SSH keys. Uh, so the, the log fil the output filtering uh, is definitely useful um, in the capacity that we'll use it. Um, it's just, uh, like I said, it's hard to bring in newer versions. Um, so we're kind of playing catch up as we go. Sure, sure, I, I, I understand that. Um, any other features that people would want to see? Is there any other things that people, you know, or uh, other plugins perhaps, um, or kind of extending the dysfunctionality to do something else? Nope, guess not. All right. Well, I guess also I'll open up to any other, any other questions. Does anybody have any? Uh, <laughs> we got a few extra minutes, so does anybody have any other uh, questions or comments or? Um, you know, desires, uh, got a bunch of Rundeck folks on the line and we'd be happy to answer any questions or provide you pointers. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got another one. Sure. <laughs> fire, fire. We're, uh, we're, we're moving to uh windows SSH server solution. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've implemented Rundeck against it. I know you guys recommend doing the WinRM thing, but, from a security perspective, that's just not gonna not gonna fly. Um, so we're gonna move over to SSH server. Everything's looking good. Just want to know if you guys have run into any known issues using the SSH protocols on Windows. Um, any plans to? I know that think Windows 10 or maybe 20 was it? whatever the next server version is coming out was supposed to have integrated SSH support. Didn't know if you guys were looking at integrating that. Yeah, we do have a few customers now moving to that. I'm happy to hear it, of course. WinRM can be a little bit tricky to work get working um, because there's so many different kind of options to it. But so far, so good. Um, yeah, it sort of behaves like you'd expect it to. So I think uh, that's very positive. Yeah, definitely let us know how that goes because that's something, as Alex said, it's something we like to see more people take advantage of. Um, obviously, it requires you know up upgrades across the board, but um, yeah, let us know how that goes. Yeah, I mean, right now we're using a third-party software provider to do the SSH server, so um, I'm hoping that once we get Windows native support, we'll be able to transition over um, and really really run this through its basis so sure sounds good thank you no yeah, problem this was great really appreciate it. anybody else have any uh, general questions or comments if not i guess we'll just uh go ahead and wrap it up oh does somebody else have one I've got a question yeah sorry just on i think joel um, was talking about and um, ssh is that installing ssh um Aren't Windows now doing a version of SSH that you can install on, on their server? Uh, it's my understanding that Windows will be implementing a native SSH server protocol in their operating systems soon. But you're not using that because I thought it was already out. I could be wrong. Uh, no, we're not using that. We're running uh, we're running some older Windows 7 and 2008 server implementations right now so we have to use a, a third-party software provider to to get that loaded on the hosts okay and what is that is that um sigwin or i don't know what, what you use open ssh um uh, because sigwin's a development tool we can't use that uh it's actually uh pragma's <laughs> fortress i believe okay. all right great and um, for run deck generally i've got a question so you know this key store we don't use um, Vault, and I don't know much about the product, but can you do encrypted passwords just on, on the file store as well, i.e. on the next server? I assume you can. Yes, you can. Um, it requires storage converter uh, setup. So that's you know, the plugin, it's optional, but that's a plugin that um, will 
take the data that you're trying to put in the key store and encrypt it and know how to decrypt it and pull it out of the key store. So yeah, if you're using a file system, that's highly recommend. Yeah, and Rendek, Rendek Pro uh, has that, that encryption uh, configured by default. Ah, so okay. if you're Excellent. so if you're if you're if you're a pro user, it's just out of the box. Okay, great. Yeah, we are pro users, so that's great. And do all of these things you've talked about do they translate to the Windows? Also, for example, in in PowerShell, we have some passwords that we use PowerShell Store to store the passwords in. Can we replace them with passwords from Rendek Store? Oh, to you. Oh, that's interesting. Um, was that question really? Can you use the PowerShell uh, secret store as a back end to the Rundet key storage? That's not what I was asking, but that's a good question. Yeah, that you just created. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of that idea. Um, that's possible. We'd have to look into it. Um, if you're a PowerShell, if you're a strong PowerShell user, maybe we can talk to you about maybe how that could be put together. Yeah, so I mean, right now they're just flat files. We just store it in .xml or .whatever, and it's got an encrypted version of the password in there. That's how a script is written, and what we do is then just call the script and run it. But it'd be nice for run deck to store the password and pass it into the PowerShell script. Is that possible? That was my Oh, word. that, yeah, that's absolutely possible. That's pretty much uh, parallel to what we were showing when we were using a command or script to read the either secure option or uh, as a uh, plugin property to uh, do it that way. Uh, yeah, so I think that, is that it need to be, to be a parameter into the script, yeah? Yes. Great. Um, we could follow up with you. I didn't. I couldn't see who that was talking about. Sorry, it's Maz. Oh, Maz, yeah, okay. Yeah, if you're interested, we could follow up with you on that. Okay, yeah, great. I've got another question. And yeah, sure. You know, once you run a job, um, can you get it to default to log out? Can you get it to default to, I didn't catch the last part. To the log output screen, so that you run job and, and it lands on log output screen. Oh, that is a very highly requested feature. Um, okay. Yes, we'll, we'll eventually do that. And then, are you also able to default? You know, I don't want to see the node necessarily, or the is it node and time? Maybe they're not important. I mean, can I get that to default as well? And let me just make sure I'm I'm picturing what you're saying correctly. So let's just look at a an example. So you don't want to see this node in this node in time here. Yeah, probably none of that. Just. I, because sometimes we just run the script from the Rundex server and it's just one line output. And I don't believe okay. really I know it's run only on the local mode. I know it's gone the local mode has run the command. But I'm okay. So is it, mode. would it basically be this, but yes. somehow to default it? Yeah, or have the option to set that per job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we do get a lot of requests for how you can um, either pick what view uh, to monitor the job or output, and then, uh, yeah. So this builds on that idea to also control how many of these columns show up by default. So, okay, that's, thank you for letting us know. Okay, any other? Uh Questions? We'd be happy to uh, to take them. If not, uh, we can wrap it up. Nope. Guess that's it. All right. Well, thanks all for uh, for joining. Um, and uh, we'll be doing another one of these next month. And uh, if you uh, sign up through that through our uh, site, uh, you'll be able to uh, get notified of that. And um, we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, guys.